No matter how far we advance, we will remember the sacrifices of those who made it possible. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at games where your player character perishes right before the credits roll. Be warned, there are some heavy spoilers ahead. It didn't take long for Reach to fall. Our enemy was ruthless, efficient, but they weren't nearly fast enough. But before we get into it, we publish new content all week long. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Stanley Parable. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The Stanley Parable made waves for its emphasis on player choice and how the hilarious narrator reacted to your decisions. But you better be careful because not all of your decisions will lead to positive outcomes. The original game featured 19 different endings, a handful of which would lead to Stanley's death. Whoops, looks like I was wrong. How clumsy of me. One conclusion sees Stanley killed in a nuclear self-destruct, while another sees him crushed by a giant machine. You can even die right at the beginning by jumping off a cargo lift. Unless you look it up, there's no way of knowing which ending your choices will lead you to. But that's one of the reasons the game is so beloved. I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Assassin's Creed 3 was Juno. Saw what she was. What would happen if I let her live? While the character you play as for the majority of the game doesn't die, the one you've played as through the present day sequences across several entries does. Desmond Miles was incredibly important for the overarching plot of Assassin's Creed. By the fifth overall entry, it was time for his story to come to a close. Towards the end of the game, Desmond learns that activating a pedestal inside the Isu's Grand Temple will release Juno and kill him in the process. But if he doesn't, the world will fall into chaos. Desmond decides to sacrifice himself despite it freeing the villainous Juno. It's the best call for humanity. All that time in the Animus living through his heroic ancestors' memories must have rubbed off. Medal of Honor. You didn't see that Chinook drop out of the sky? We've been a little busy up here. We're the QRF sent to get you guys. Our bird was hit. We've lost three men so far. This 2010 entry in EA's military shooter series attempted to follow Call of Duty into the grittier modern day. As such, it required an impactful ending, and there's almost nothing more powerful than killing off the player character. For most of the game, players control a Navy SEAL codenamed Rabbit. During his last mission, Rabbit is gravely injured multiple times from jumping off a cliff, RPG fire, and torture at the hands of insurgents. How's he doing? Hey, Rabbit, hang in there. We got you. We got you. Damn. While his allies are able to rescue him and call for extraction, it arrives a bit too late. Rabbit passes from his multitude of wounds, while his allies can do nothing but watch. This isn't how this ends. No, it isn't. Resistance 2. The aliens of the Resistance series are nasty pieces of work. Through use of a biological weapon called the Chimeran Virus, they can mutate a variety of creatures. For the first two games, players control Nathan Hale, a U.S. soldier infected with the virus who must keep it at bay while utilizing its useful side effects. Unfortunately, Hale can't keep the virus under control forever. Throughout the second game, his condition grows more dire, especially following contact with pure Chimeran DNA. By the end, he has fully succumbed to it. With no other option, his ally Joseph Capelli executes him. While Hale is lost, at least his death leads to a cure seen in the sequel. This is just the beginning. Forgive me, sir. Killzone Shadowfall. The weak perished. Those of us that survived 
were meant to. Set several decades after Killzone 3, Shadowfall follows Lucas Kellen, a covert operative of the Interplanetary Strategic Alliance. As it turns out, futuristic spycraft is filled with just as many backstabs and double crosses as there have always been. In order to stop war between the Vectans and Hellgast from causing more death, Kellen disobeys his superior Sinclair. This comes back to bite him in the end as Sinclair shoots him and plans to use a biotech weapon to destroy the Hellgast. Sorry I couldn't be that person. Getting betrayed by someone you look up to must sting quite a bit. But that made it all the sweeter when, during a mid credit scene, we played as Kellen's ally Echo, who got vengeance on his behalf. Heavenly Sword The sword for which this action game is named eventually takes the life of its wielders, but it's strong enough that people have warred over it throughout the centuries. Players control Nariko, a warrior from the tribe who has protected the sword for years. To stop an oppressive king from obtaining the sword and using it for his own gain, Nariko wields it herself to protect her people. No. I chose. I chose my own way. And those of us who have died for this sword have died in vain. She's actually killed by it before the end of the game, though makes a deal with the sword to come back in an attempt to bring peace to the world. She's ultimately successful, but still has to pay the almighty weapon's price. I'll keep the sword safe. Maybe even forgotten. But I'll always remember you. Mafia. You did it, but they'll get you all the same. Salieri will get you. Working for a crime family is a dangerous business, as a plethora of mob movies have taught us. Mafia teaches us the same lesson. The story follows Tommy Angelo, a cabbie who was forced into working for the Salieri family in the 1930s. Despite it definitely not being his first career choice, things go pretty well for a while. But betrayals within the family soon come to a head, and Tommy must flee with his family. Sam, do you really think everything has to end like this? In order to keep them safe, he testifies against Salieri for a reduced sentence of eight years. Unfortunately, even witness protection can't keep him safe, and Tommy ends up being shot by two hitmen on Salieri's behalf. Uh, yes? Mr. Salieri sends his regards. Infamous 2. If I use that thing, it's going to kill us. Kill all conduits, not just the beast. Being a superhero often means you'll have to make sacrifices. In Infamous 2, the sacrifice Cole McGrath must make is giving his own life. Cole learns of an ultra-powerful conduit known only as the Beast, who will one day destroy the world. In order to stop the Beast, Cole eventually uses the Ray Field Inhibitor, a special device that can take away the powers of conduits. In the game's good ending, which has been confirmed to be the canon one, Cole makes the tough call to supercharge the device, killing himself and thousands of other conduits across the globe, including the Beast. It's a bit bleak, but it means that humanity has a future. The plague? Man, it was just gone. I could already hear people starting to party. Star Wars The Force Unleashed Come with me. More will be here soon. In this fantastic Star Wars game, players control Starkiller, the badass apprentice to Darth Vader. Although raised from a very early age to be a Sith, Starkiller struggles with his alignment throughout the game, and his betrayal at the hands of his master later in the story makes things even more confusing. After defeating Vader at the end of the game, the player chooses between two different endings. The good ending sees him choose the light side, resulting in him sacrificing himself to save his friend Coda. While the evil ending has him survive, the game's sequel has you play as his clone, making it clear that the good ending is the canon one. He is dead. 
then he is now more powerful than ever. Outlast. Investigative journalist Miles Upshur is completely unequipped to navigate the horrific inside of Mount Massive Asylum. Armed with nothing but a video camera, you're confronted by things much worse than a creepy atmosphere. In addition to violent patients, the asylum is home to the Wall Rider, a murderous spirit that has thrown the facility into chaos. Towards the end of the game, Miles must kill a comatose patient controlling the Wall Rider, but very unfortunately becomes the spirit's new host. The possession doesn't last long though, as Miles is gunned down by a military team. From the sound of it, they quickly come to regret their decision. God in him, you have become the host. Slender, the Eight Pages. This indie survival horror game had the world talking non-stop about the gangly, blank-faced Slenderman. Although fairly simple, being confronted by him was one of the most terrifying moments we had experienced in a game. Players everywhere were seeing how quickly they could collect the eight pages in order to outrun him and survive. However, even if you do collect all eight pages, you don't exactly win. He'll still get you in the end despite collecting all of the creepy drawings. He'll pop up just as he always does, only to scare the pants off of you when the screen cuts to black. L.A. Noir. Cole, he's one of ours. What are you talking about? Right where you are! Got it, got it. Much like classic noir films, Rockstar's L.A. Noir is filled with danger and deception. Players control Cole Phelps, a former Marine turned LAPD detective. It isn't long before Phelps is able to move up the ranks, but that success quickly comes crashing down after he has an affair. Following demotion and humiliation, Phelps works hard to rebuild his image through what will be his final case. Final being the prominent word here. Cole, up here! I'll get this great hurry, hurry. The water is rising! They're first! While Phelps is eventually successful in solving the case and redeeming himself, it comes at the cost of his own life. While inside the LA River tunnels, he's killed by a massive rush of water due to heavy rainfall. He does get a lovely funeral though. Cole Phelps was the best kind of man. Here, here, a war hero who led his men with true valor. Persona 3. But that doesn't mean that other ways of living are wrong. No one knows which road leads to happiness. Persona 3 is another game with two endings, but unlike Infamous 2 and The Force Unleashed, you die in both. The game's protagonist leads a group of high schoolers who have the ability to summon personas and fight the shadows, dangerous beasts hungry for human minds. Unbeknownst to them, this causes an extremely powerful being called Nyx to be free and head to Earth in an attempt to destroy all of humanity. Eventually, you get your two choices. Please, get some rest. I'll stay right here with you. You can choose to forget everything, living a blissfully ignorant existence with your friends until Nyx arrives to kill everyone. Or you can choose to fight Nyx, sealing the being away. Even in victory, the battle takes a toll and your life is sacrificed to save the world. Don't worry, I will always be by your side, protecting you. Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII. You're gonna make it too. You got that? Anyone who played the original Final Fantasy VII knew Zack Fair would not be making it out of this prequel a lot. But that doesn't make his death any less meaningful. Zack's journey takes him from loyal Shinra soldier to being hunted by that very organization. After learning that he's been experimented on for years in an attempt to create super soldiers, Zack and his new friend Cloud abandon Shinra. You have succeeded Angeal's spirit and carry a part of Sephiroth within you. 
During the game's climax, we get to play through Zack's final stand, defending an injured cloud from a swarm of Shinra troops with the iconic Buster Sword. It's an incredibly heroic moment, but one that ends with Zack's tragic demise. Live. Mass Effect 3. Synthesis is the final evolution of all life. The paths are open, but you have to choose. The ending of Mass Effect 3 has been talked about to death. And speaking of death, it's pretty unlikely Commander Shepard makes it through any of the optional endings. In the game's controversial climax, players get three choices. Destroy the Reapers, control the Reapers, or merge all synthetic and organic life. Unless you happen to choose the destructive ending after having amassed an EMS rating of 3100 or more, within the extended cut, mind you, Shepard isn't making it to the credits. Even if they do, that's just a special treat for those specific players. Canonically speaking, Shepard is dead unless Bioware decides to retcon the decision. The archives tell the true story of those who came before us. They fought a terrible war, so we wouldn't have to. Bioshock Infinite. Wait a minute. I know this place. The confusing multiversal nature of Bioshock Infinite and its Burial at Sea DLC makes it difficult to narrow down Booker DeWitt's overall fate. But the fact remains that the version you play as in the main game dies at the end. During the climax, Booker learns that villain Zachary Comstock is really an alternate reality version of himself. Beware the false shepherd Booker DeWitt, for he shall be as a wall between her and destiny. Why? The religious zealot was born out of a baptism some versions of Booker took part in as a way to atone for past atrocities. In order to fully stop Comstock from coming into existence, Booker allows various versions of Elizabeth to drown him so that the decision is never made. See? Confusing. No. I'm both. Shadow of the Colossus. This bona fide classic follows Wander, a young man who will do just about anything to save the seemingly dead Mono. What he does end up doing is slaying 16 breathtaking colossi at the request of Dorman, an entity sealed inside the game's temple. But surprise, Dorman isn't to be trusted. With the quest complete, Lord Emmon and his men show up at the temple and stab Wander through the heart for his actions. However, the now free Dorman possesses Wander's body and starts rampaging. In a last ditch effort, Emmon performs a ritual to consume Dorman and Wander's body in a whirlwind of light. Although the revived Mono finds what seems to be a reborn infant Wander inside the pool, the man who saved her is definitely gone. Halo Reach. This prequel offers a nice connection to the original Halo during the ending, but things don't turn out too well for your character. The game is set on Reach, one of the last Earth-like colonies and the UNSC's main military hub used to combat the villainous Covenant. The game ends with your character, Noble Six, staying behind on Reach to make sure the ship Pillar of Autumn makes it off safely. Or at least that's where we thought it was going to end. After the credits roll, you're given one last objective, survive. Only, you can't. Fight all you like, the Covenant forces will always overwhelm Noble Six, though it's your actions and sacrifice that secure humanity's survival. The Walking Dead Season 1 Did he hurt you? No, not really. 
I'm sorry, Lee. Claire, it's okay. Despite being set during the zombie apocalypse, seeing multiple characters die, and the fact that it's based on a series overflowing with tragic deaths, we were still shocked by this one. We follow Lee Everett, who looks after a young girl named Clementine. The bond between the two is beautifully built up over the course of the game, which just makes his demise more devastating. You're strong, Clem. You... you can do anything. But I'm little. Towards the end, Lee is bitten by a walker. You get the option to tell Clementine to shoot Lee before he turns, or leave him behind. Regardless, Lee's death is utterly heartbreaking. Fallout 3 Once you're dead, we'll finish off this pathetic brotherhood and become the true saviors of the wasteland. Remember when Fallout 3's nonsensical ending had you die despite there being a very easy solution for you not to? And everyone got annoyed prompting Bethesda to fix it through DLC? Good times. But anyway, let's get to our real final pick. So ends the story of the Lone Wanderer. Red Dead Redemption. And you go inside and you keep the doors and the windows locked. I hear ya. Then run! Yeah, run, boy! Although Arthur Morgan's death in the prequel definitely deserves some recognition, we have to give love to the original. John Marston was trying to put his past life as an outlaw behind him, living a simple life with his family. Unfortunately for him, government agent Edgar Ross wasn't having it, and kidnapped his family to make Marston hunt down the members of his former gang. Upon doing so, Marston was met with betrayal, Ross let his family go free, but gunned him down, securing his placement as one of the most hated characters in gaming history. It's an absolutely iconic death scene, though we were more than happy to see John's son get vengeance in an epilogue. Did any of these deaths catch you off guard? Which protagonist do you wish had made it to the end? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great gaming videos every day.